All right, and hello, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this edition, where I'm back in the studio again. <laughs> I've had a couple car reviews. Hope you enjoyed those. Back in the studio to talk about some new stories, uh, mainly some automotive announcements for today. So hope everybody's doing well. Let me get right into it. All right, first story today is about Volkswagen. They did a world premiere of the Volkswagen ID5 what they call their SUV Coupe, and of course the ID5 GTX model that's out there as well. Now, this is part of Volkswagen's electric offensive, and it continues its advance with the launch of this new ID family top model as part of their Accelerate brand strategy, which they call On the Way to Zero. Now, the elegant, expressive eSUV Coupe is equipped with the new ID software version 3, which includes improved charging performance and voice control, among other features. Now, with the use of Swarm data and latest generation driver assistance systems, Volkswagen is also taking the next step towards automated driving. Now, the new ID5 and the sporty ID5 GTX, which has the dual motor all wheel drive, are the new long range top models on the ID family, as I mentioned. Now, like all ID models, Volkswagen's first ESUV coupe is based on the Volkswagen Modular Electric Drive Matrix, or known as the MEB platform. For the battery, the only option available on the ID5 is the larger 77 kilowatt hour battery pack, and that enables a range of up to about 520 kilometers, 323 miles, in the rear wheel drive models. And that's a WLTB combined number. We don't have EPA numbers out yet. Now, the ID5 GTX has a lower estimated range of about 480 kilometers, 298 miles or so compared to the rear wheel drive model. Now, while there's only one battery choice, VW offers three powertrain variants for the ID5. There's the ID5 Pro base model, and that features a rear mounted electric motor rated at 128 kilowatts or about 172 horsepower and 229 pound feet of torque. While the mid range ID5 Pro performance has the same layout but a more powerful motor making about 150 kilowatts or 201 horsepower and the same 229 pound feet of torque. As for the ID5 GTX, the range topping variant, it is the only dual motor model available. And the all wheel drive system in this model delivers a maximum of 220 kilowatts or about 295 horsepower enabling a 0 to 100 kilometers an hour or 0 to 62 or so time of about 6.3 seconds, which is pretty respectable, and a top speed of 180 kilometers per hour, which is just over 110 or so miles per hour. Now, the ID5 can also be charged with up to 11 kilowatts of AC charging, of course, which is great, and up to 135 kilowatts as standard at a fast charge station for DC charging, so good to hear. The VW ID5 and the ID5 GTX will launch in Europe in early 2022, but the automaker said nothing of a US or Canada North American debut as of yet. However, I do expect that it should follow and show up on our shores either in late 2022 or probably into 2023. Stay tuned for that. Now, Hyundai Canada uh, announced the Ionic 5 pricing for our country here, and I got really excited about that, so I thought I'd talk about it today. They provided their full pricing information for the all-new 2022 Ionic 5, as I mentioned, which is their electric crossover utility vehicle. Everybody's calling them CUVs now. The Ionic 5 is poised to elevate the EV ownership experience with a targeted driving range of up to 480 kilometers, Design inspired by Hyundai's 45 EV concept, advanced technology, and best in class ultra fast charging from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes, which is pretty fast. So the pricing that was, was uh, released is as follows. For the Essential model, which gives you about 354 kilometers of range, it's $44,999 as a starting MSRP. The Preferred with the same range is about $46,999 MSRP. The Preferred Long Range is 480 kilometers, that's the longest range of the variants, at $51,999. And the preferred all-wheel drive long range will come in at about 415 kilometers, 
for a price of $54,999 as a starting MSRP. Now again, all these ranges are estimated for North America uh, EPA. It hasn't been fully vetted yet, but I'm sure we'll see them. Those numbers come up uh, very soon and probably pretty close to what Hyundai is estimating. Now first units of the Ionic 5 will start arriving in December. They will be distributed across about 2,000 Canadians so far who have submitted pre-orders. Great to see, and yes, if you've looked at that pricing, you will notice that pretty well all those models will qualify for the Canadian federal tax uh, incentive, or actually the rebate of $5,000, because uh, Vida uh, uh, Hyundai has priced that accordingly to fit in those thresholds. So excellent job. Really happy to see that. Switching gears to Mitsubishi, they've launched the all-new Outlander plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. They've updated it. They started launching it in Japan. There was an announcement about a week or so ago. It's fully redesigned uh, their uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, the Outlander. And remember, it was first introduced in 2013 and so far has sold over 290,000 units globally, making it the number one plug-in hybrid electric vehicle sold globally. So congratulations on Mitsubishi. Now, the Japanese manufacturer lists three main areas of the comprehensive upgrade new generation uh, uh, plug-in hybrid electric systems that deliver more powerful road performance and greater driving range. It offers safe, secure, and comfortable driving in various weather and road conditions with its uh, driving modes, and the exterior with powerful presence and advanced high-class interior is all updated for this uh, upcoming new year. Now, the Mitsubishi Outlander uh, PHEV will be equipped with a 20 kilowatt hour battery, and that's compared to the 12 kilowatt hour which initially came on the vehicle, then they upgraded it later to 13.8. So it's a good jump from 13.8 to 20, which is now expected to give it up to about 87 kilometers or 54 miles of WLTC all electric range. We'll have to wait and see what the EPA ratings, but they're probably going to be just slightly less but probably around 80 kilometers which is not going to be too shabby sales will commence in japan uh next month uh, mid of december followed by australia and new zealand where these things are hot commodities and in the first half of 2022 and then continue to north america in the second half of 2022 which we'll see it here so i do look forward to getting my hands on one canadian pricing and all the trim levels will be announced later in 2022 i don't have any numbers on that yet but you know if you saw my uh, mitsubishi outlander uh, phev review from uh, last year or earlier this year you'll know that it's a very competent vehicle i did welcome it. it it did have still one of the higher ranges from a plug-in hybrid and now with this um, larger battery that will take it farther in all electric range i think they've done a good thing let me switch gears to genesis they unveiled their first dedicated electric vehicle called the gv60 a model that embodies the brand's journey towards electrification the GV60 is a high-performance electric vehicle with a sleek and athletic coupe crossover utility vehicle, or CUV. You're hearing a lot of that today, folks. Designed that it is uh, expands Genesis athletic elegance, as they call it, identity into the sustainable luxury space. Now, the GV60 is Genesis' first vehicle to be built on the dedicated EV platform known as the Electric Global Modular Platform, or the EGMP, which is shared both by Genesis, Kia, and Hyundai. It's marking the, this brand's first move towards fully electric uh, electrification. It is available in three models. It's going to have a standard rear-wheel drive model, a standard four-wheel drive model, and a performance model similar to Ala GT with a four-wheel drive, of course. Now, each model features a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery, and the standard rear-wheel drive model features a maximum driving range of about 451 kilometers. The standard rear-wheel drive model is equipped with a motor that features a maximum output of 160 8 kilowatts or 225 horsepower and a maximum torque of 258 foot-pounds. Now the standard all-wheel drive model provides a total output of 234 kilowatts or about 314 horsepower and a maximum torque of 446 
foot-pounds, and a maximum driving range of about 400 kilometers. So good driving range and lots of power. And furthermore, charging time for the slow charging function has been shortened by increasing the charging capacity from 7.2 to 11 kilowatts for AC charging. So good for them. No pricing or ETAs available at this time. More info will follow, but great to see Genesis finally get on the bandwagon. Well, Toyota's finally done some announcements, and they revealed some new pieces of information about their upcoming fully electric SUV, the 2022 BZ4X or BZ4X. Now, the BZ4X is one of the two fully electric models Toyota plans to introduce in the U.S. soon, and it could help Toyota carve out a niche in the growing market for this first mass market EV entry. They really need to carve out that, that niche, I'll tell you. It will have a battery that Toyota is vouching for in a way manufacturers haven't yet, this is kind of unique for Toyota. They claim that their battery pack will still hold 90% of its original capacity after 10 years. That is outstanding, folks. Hopefully the, they can live up to the claims, but Toyota is pretty good on building quality. They're using a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, and they anticipate a range of about 310 miles, 499 kilometers. Now with just a 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger, however, it does get the minimum hardware needed for a long overnight charge. Now the BZ4X was built or is built on the E TNGA platform for dedicated electric vehicles that Toyota put together and it's a ground up design in fact it's the same platform I believe that Subaru is using. It will come in a front wheel drive version offering 201 horsepower and an all wheel drive providing 215 horsepower. Oh yes, there's more. There's a yoke. <laughs> yes, like Tesla and the Model S Plaid, a Model S it's a steer by wire system. So while the yoke is initially just for the Chinese markets, it is due to be fitted on other vehicles launched from 2022 onwards. So we may see that come to North America. Who knows? Have to wait and see. Stay tuned for more information to follow soon from Toyota, but I am glad that they continue to pursue this path and I do look forward to seeing that vehicle. Well, finally, some great news from south of the border. Not that we just opened up the borders again to uh, land crossings for us canonical heads, but they also, the lawmakers approved the $1 trillion infrastructure bill. They passed that landmark uh, infrastructure package recently following the Senate's earlier agreement, which is great. And I talked about that on a previous episode. President Biden now only has to sign it into law and effectively freeing about $15 billion in funding for electric transportation. That's the amount out of that package. And specifically, the package includes $7.5 billion for expanding electric vehicle charging infrastructure nationwide in the U.S. with a planned 500,000 station count and $7.5 billion for electric buses. So good to see. Biden called the passage of the bill, quote, a monumental step forward as a nation, unquote, and I certainly agree. And also the Biden administration promises to increase the federal tax credit for electric vehicles to $12,500. And I talked about that in a previous episode while I gave you the breakdown. Go look it up. However, again, only those vehicles assembled by union workers in the U.S. will qualify for that higher amount. Currently, the maximum for the Fed tax credit in the U.S. is $7,500. And of course, some manufacturers like GM and Tesla are past that threshold, so they don't qualify. But the House uh, will now move forward with the said social and environmental spending bill favored by liberal lawmakers on the back of the infrastructure package, and it should be be a start to be implemented soon. So again, congratulations. This is a big step for the U.S. They are looked at as a world leader on various levels of all kinds of different stages, and it's nice to see them really start chugging forward on the electrification front. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you found that information helpful and encouraging. A lot of stuff going on in the EV world. This is not this little hidden gem anymore. It's out there. So appreciate everybody who watches on YouTube. Thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It would be mean a lot to me. Uh, always welcome comments and feedback. I love and uh, listening or reading all that stuff, and I try to respond to each and every comment that I can. So I appreciate that uh, please continue to do so if you are a patreon supporter you know you always get my humble thanks put all your names at the end of each and every episode that i do thank you very much if you're interested in finding out more check out the link for patreon if you feel like supporting me 
that would be fantastic. I would appreciate it. Of course, continue to follow the EV revolution. Lots going on. Stay safe, of course. We're still, you know, going through some stuff here with the pandemic and other things. So everybody continue to stay safe, stay, stay healthy, watch the EV landscape. And until the next episode, again, stay safe. And I will see you when I see you. Take care and thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.